Hey guys, welcome back to Best Village. Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Ruby. I'm so happy you're here. What's your name? I'm Jay. Good job. J-I. J-I. I tried to change my Instagram handle to J-I. It didn't work. J-A-I. J-I would be better, but that definitely didn't work. So we still haven't updated. Instagram? We're still on a mission to find a new Instagram handle for me because mine's kind of What if we did a competition? Cringe and outdated. What if we had people write in and suggest new Instagram handles for you? Yeah, guys, if you have an idea and if for a really it, cool they get to come on the podcast. Self-aware Instagram handle for me, I will be so thankful. Okay. Thank so you. that's uh something with J. Okay. Feel free to use the word AI or vibes, JVOT. Mm. Anything else? Any other adjectives? Something that's like, uh, something that gets a reaction. Oh my God, something I almost that said makes slay. Me sound I, oh, guys, update in my life. I'm trying to stop saying the word slay. So if I say it on this pod, Jay has permission to cut me off. Oh, I, I, I closed a huge deal at work today. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, congratulations. He wanted me to say Sly. It normally works. Because you did th you pulled that on me yesterday and I will have no such thing of it anymore. So that's what's new in my life. Oh, Harrison's coming into town. Did you just get a text about that? It's not gonna work. Damn it. <laughs> I'm committed uh, to bettering myself. Okay, we're not saying Slay anymore. I really tried to get her. She didn't take the bait. You have to, like, do it when I'm not, like, ready. Okay. I'll do it when you least expect it. Um, She's totally going to say it this episode, for sure. Okay. Anyways, we have a very tight agenda. We have a lot of things to cover. The, the menu is packed um, up with topics. Tasty, delicious topics. Amazing. Yeah. Excited. The first topic, it was just for us to riff and just get it out of our system. Oh, you're sharing the outline with the party people? Oh, yeah. We're fully transparent. Okay, we're riffing. We, we share everything with our audience. Okay. Everything. No personal space. No boundaries no between... secrets. People that listen to the show and us. I really in our wish personal lives. that I could actually give all of my secrets on the pod. Just kidding. But I, I do think that, like, we should organize something where anyone that listens and lives in New York and wants to come hang out should can come say what's up. We're, going, we're planning that. Okay. Probably like middle of February after dry January. Okay, can you describe what it is? Because it sounds very exciting. And I feel like some people listening right now might be excited by this. So we are going to plan a bar crawl on a Saturday in New York, probably in February. Saturday afternoon. Why a bar crawl again? Because what else are you going to do on a Saturday besides drink? <laughs> Also, like, that's my favorite place to be is a bar, and we're probably at a bar anyway, and, you know, let's bring my day job into everyone it. Everyone can come. Everyone should come. Everyone has to come. You have to come, if you can. If not, then don't come. We'll post the details on our Instagram. But where you also, we're doing a, a launch party as well, right? Oh, we are? Yeah. But I are. don't know if that's going to be open to the public. Okay. Well, that might just be a more I never intimate, like, gathering of, like, the top-tier friends, the value-add friends. Yeah. The well, high-value friends. Why don't we do both? Why don't we do, like, a, a more intimate launch party and then, like, a blow it out. Can we get a chef best for village. the intimate launch party? Sure. And we can get just pizza for the big blowout one. Perfect. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> awkward. Not really at all. <laughs> just kidding. No awkwardness Juicy. here. Juicy. There's, like, a TikTok trend that's, like, your friend who like has a guy for everything. Yeah. I'm that person. You're that person. Yeah. What what don't I have access to? I need a I need a horse guy. I need a guy that can get a horse in the city. We have that. You have that? Yeah. Okay, we'll talk. Don't ask why. Uh, see how I didn't ask why? I like was really hoping you asked why. I, I don't really ask wanted you to ask why. You didn't Why? Why no, do you need no, a horse? No, I don't want to tell you. I don't ask questions. I just, like, get results. I just want, I don't want a car. I want to ride it, something to work every day. With two, three steps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, the next thing on the agenda, which I am so excited. Riff equals over. But is there anything else you want to riff about? Um, I feel like I should update everyone that I figured out my meds, and I'm much more stable than I was the last time we recorded. Wow, so it's just a dosing thing? I think so. I met with my psychiatrist this week, and she was like, it feels, seems like you've made some real progress. When do you take your... It's, it's an SSRI, I can't remember. It's Prozac. Prozac, yeah. Yeah. I take it in the morning. Right when you wake up? Within the first hour, I'm awake. Are you like, excited to take it? Like, can you feel the effects right after, like, shortly after? I you mean, take I'm it? excited to take it just because, like, it's pretty, and I My know God. that it's like helping me. You're excited to take your Prozac because it's pretty. Yeah. I well, I alternate. One day I, I do 10 milligrams, and those pills are blue and orange, and then on the opposite day I do 20 milligrams, and those pills are like a butter yellow and a pastel green. Wow, are you really? Aesthetics, guys. Aesthetics are, aesthetics are important. I love it. It's all about. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of having a pharmaceutical kick in the ass. So I'm better, guys. I don't. I'm. She's a fan of big pharma. I don't know if I'm a fan of big pharma. They do, make shit that work. Apparently, it works. Yeah, I mean, here we are. And they make it look good too while they're at it. Yeah, I love that it's pretty. Is it generic or non-generic? Do you know? No. Probably. Like name brand. It's probably name brand. Yeah. Prozac. The drug in Prozac is. No, that's great. Oh, we're looking it up. What is the active ingredient of Prozac? Fluoxetine. 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 Glad I had an R in there. Fluoxetine. Anyways, I, you know how I, when you haven't taken a drug, you kind of have no idea how it makes you feel? And you're kind of just like guessing like the feeling of. Like, I've never had acid before. I've never dropped acid never before. Have so I have no idea what it feels like. And I kind of, like, I don't know, I'm making it up, but I have a, an idea of what it might feel like. Well, like Same is like true for me in Prozac. I, I have feel no like idea. you can see the effects of me. Yeah. Like, I'm much more chipper than I was <laughs> three weeks ago. I didn't take Adderall until way late. I don't, I don't take it regularly, but I hadn't even tried Adderall until, like, a year or two ago, wow. which is pretty late. I've never tried I never that. had it in college. I've never and I had it. this idea of how it made you feel, and I was completely wrong. Oh, maybe I'm wrong, too, then. Yeah. Should we try it? Um, no. Any, anything else that um, we need to riff about? Like, I feel like this whole riffing thing is, is more of just like a what pops in your head. That's all I had to share. That's it? If something comes oh, up. Oh, we're making merch. We... We discussed making merch. We're making merch. It's happening. And so, I come to our party and you can buy it. Yeah, come to our party. You can buy it. It's going to be quality. It's unfortunately going to be limited edition. We can't give one to everyone. Premium merch. Premium. Like so premium. Back yeah. to my fashion days. We're going back to the studio. Do you have a person for that? I do. Do you have a supplier? <laughs> I quite literally have Are a Are they going to be pretty and aesthetic? Yeah. He was like, we should do merch. I was like, okay, done. One is it going to be made by Big Fabric? No. Like the big... We support... Local, local, micro retailers and brands. Producers. Factories. Textile manufacturers. Samples. Just your... We could make... Soho... Cynthia was like, why don't we make Best Village Stanley Cups? <laughs> 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 I was like, I don't know if that's I love how demo. her brain works. Yeah. That was her first thing. Guys, they're going to be great. So they're going to be soft, most importantly. Sometimes I think my wardrobe would be the same if I was blind because I'm very, as you know, I'm very tactile. Like, the feeling matters. The feeling matters. The feeling matters. Feelings matter. Feelings matter. And I buy with my nose, I mean, not nose, <laughs> nose first, hands first, and then I, my eyes. Oh, that I'm makes the sense. opposite. Well, yeah, of course. You should, as you should be. I, I, if I don't, I'll scan a store, and if I don't see something I like, I'll walk It's out. much more efficient. You don't have to go around touching everything. But you then can if just I, see. like, the touch is, like, the close, closing deal. Like, if yeah. I like the touch, then I'll buy it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it's taken me years to find a style that works for both tacti tactically, no? Sometimes I forget that you're, like, 10 years older Tactile. than me. Yeah. And that you not have. A, not, that, not that much older than you, but yeah. Like eight years older than eight me. Years older, eight, okay. It's not a problem of age. It's just the, the you've experienced like eight a more lot. years of like figuring yeah. out who you are. Yeah, 
Yeah, with minimal progress. Yeah. I mean, I don't actually think that you're older than me. <laughs> well, guys just take something. Wait, I heard that men aren't fully mature until they're 43. <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> That's like the fact going around TikTok right now. I think I have a much better idea of who I am. It's more, so, but that's not really like what's changed. It's more so you kind of just stop caring as much, I think. About what other people think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a vibe. Can't wait. To stop Things it. affect okay. me less. Okay, I think the riff is over. The riff is over. We're going to move on to the next segment of the show, which is stark difference to the first segment segment which is guys versus girls perspective on things okay and you have a list i have a list i'm gonna try to just that you crowdsource which by the way we want to do a lot more of crowdsourcing from you guys to to interact with us dm us comment on our reels like find us on the street stop us like talk to us we're very friendly people mostly because we have just a lot of of great takes from our friends friends of ours are highly opinionated 100 percent. okay so I made, I did make a list on my phone. Okay. Um, I crowdsourced. I wrote to the girlies and I said, "What are their thing? What things do you think that men just don't understand?" And here are some of the things that came up, and I would like your response on all of them. I will do my best. Okay. Girls don't like it when you pick a date spot, a first date spot near your house. It seems presumptuous, and, like, if you're picking a dive bar in Williamsburg, like, and you live in Williamsburg, like, it's not for the vibes. It's for the convenience. How do you feel about that? I don't doubt that it's happening, mostly because uh, it's, like, how close a venue is to my house is not something I'm optimizing for or trying to avoid, like, Whenever I pick a spot, I mean, I also live. We also live in the West Village, so it's like you're not trying to avoid it, but you also aren't necessarily like you're not saying like to yourself, if I pick this restaurant, it's two blocks from my house. The girl might think X, Y, Z. I'm not thinking that at all. Yeah, men no. don't think. <laughs> no, I think we covered that last week. We think, just not necessarily about the best thing to think about all the time. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about like? I think we have like a. 50% hit rate on the things you should be thinking about at any one time. Okay. Us guys. Vibe. And we're learning. We're, we're, we really are trying, guys, to be better as Do guys. Do you think... Right, guys? Now that I've said this to you and to what? all the men listening, like the yeah. next time you pick a date spot, the first date spot, are you going to keep in mind how close the place is to your house? I will take that into consideration for sure. Yeah. But we live in the West Village. The best, some of the best restaurants yes, in yes, New York yes. are there. Yes, it is difficult, and like, you can pick one one block away from your house, or you could pick one like seven blocks away. Oh, I love or the restaurants that are Or you could say, south. what neighborhood does said girl live in, and maybe choose a place closer to her. True, that'd be very thoughtful. Yes. Well, this leads me into another topic. Guys, this is Kev, by the way, mm-hmm. also known as Kevin. <laughs> okay. The next thing I was going to say, which I don't know if I wrote down, but that guys are terrible planners and there's like a stark difference between saying like, hey, where do you want to go on this date to like, hey, I'm going to pick you up at eight. The reservation's at 830 at Lore, at Sartiano's, at. I don't know. I'm a girl. Yeah. (laughs) I. I'm more that like I pick the place got a time but only when I'm in like dating mode when I have like the the sort of I go through cycles where I just like can't really date and cycles where I can date okay um whenever I'm in like a point of life where I can date and take it seriously I do that but not when I'm not in that mode if that makes sense okay you never so know why what, are what you dating during those times then I'm not really dating. I'm like... You're seeking attention. Meeting people. No, uh, meeting people, like going out with friends, like kind of things are happening more organically. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, This is a little bit of a hot take. Okay. If you're dating someone, going on dates, like have a flirty relationship. Yeah. Don't watch 
this is not my opinion, but don't watch this my This is from one of your friends. Yeah. Okay. Don't, and I, I kind of agree, but it's not like a Ruby statement. Okay. Don't watch my Instagram stories if you're not going to text me. Like. You mean respond to a text or text you text first? Text me first. First, like. In, and text you first? Respond, yes. Like, don't watch my stories if you owe me a text. Response, that's like one. But two, like, if we're not, like, going to, like, be t texting anymore, stop watching my Instagram stories. I don't know if I believe in that. But, like, I mute me. In that. Mute you? That's I mean, so going out of your way. And it's kind of rude. I mean, if I've, like, gone on a couple dates with a guy and I know it's not going anywhere, I'll mute him. That might be a Ruby Rubyism. Mm. Maybe not. Guys. I mean, I mute people left Chime right. in here. Are you muting people if they, like, take a step back? I is also it, is heard it someone that you were expecting to continue progressing things with and then they just stopped or took a step back? I guess that that let's go with that. I could see that. I mean, it, it is kind of painful to keep seeing them over and over again. Yeah. Whenever you really like them. There's also the belief that if you have a crush on somebody, you should mute their stories because you like them enough. And you're thinking about them enough. You don't need to, like, think about them even more. Whoa, with, is like, that a mainstream take, you think? I, it's on TikTok. It's something really? that I do sometimes. I just, lo I just love, well, first of all, our TikTok feeds are or so, so different. I send Jay TikToks, and he's like, how, how are is you this on my, in mine that is all corner just of the world? <laughs> mine is all just animals. Like <laughs> Mine is unhinged shit. So bad. Um, okay, well, this this goes to a second another point that I wrote down, which is I think there is, I think, I think people are always looking for signal or information in people's story and like Instagram engagement patterns. Like if this guy watched my story, then he still likes me. Or if this guy liked my post or didn't like my post, that means something. But I think there's very little information in whether someone watched your story or not. Especially story. Like if they watch, like people are just doing it on autopilot. It's like, I, but people are always saying like, oh, well, they still watch my stories. I'm like, what do you mean? Like that doesn't mean anything. There's no information. What there. about like liking stories? Liking stories is from a guy. If a guy likes your story, it's pretty positive. I think that's, there's okay, a that's good amount flirty. of information. It's flirty. Yeah. Unless it's just like one of those stories that everyone's liking is like a, a cute dog in it or something. Yeah. Like if it's a picture of you. Oh my God. Yeah. And a guy likes it. Is it safe to say that every single... Okay, okay, here, here's a good one. Go. If a girl posts a story that's like in a mirror, a mirror selfie or something like that, mm -hmm. like it's like very much about them and them, uh, like a selfie basically, or s sort of like a selfie, is it more likely that they just want... Well, clearly they want likes. Yes, they, do that. they want attention. They want attention. Is it more likely that they want attention from a specific person or they just want intention in general. Are like they are they fishing for a compliment? I think it's from a case by case. But what 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 one's more likely? No, like I a specific person, but all feedback is fabulous. Also Curious what you guys think. Sometimes there's a point. It's like how okay, do we, how do we we get this to be a two way street with people? So Should I we live stream this. What we want like immediate Maybe response? Maybe not. Are they res is there a place to leave a comment on the Spotify? Not on Spotify, but on YouTube. Okay. If you're listening to the Spotify right now, hop on over to YouTube, guys. First of all, you can see my my new hoodie, which is actually kind of underwhelming, but cool you color. You can see my new hair. You can see her new hair, and um, most importantly, you can leave a comment and just like literally like multiple comments, maybe. Yeah. With every time we you have a thought or a, we ask a question, I would we'd love we'd love the answers. We'll read it. You know because I'm always on. That's the half the beauty of a podcast. It's weird if it's just super one-sided. Well, there are two of us. That's true. Okay. Next. Do you have any more hot takes from the girls? Or things I that guys are terrible at? Do. I was just gonna like this is more like outing the girls is crazy. Okay. And just that like guys don't understand the way girls think. Right. Like for example. A girl accidentally leaves a pair of earrings at a guy's house. Okay. And he doesn't reach out about, like, returning the earrings. Yeah. The girl thinks, oh, he probably just, like, couldn't remember whose earrings they are. They are. Like, he has so many girls over. Is that really the first thought? M yes. More so than, like, he just forgot? Yes. Wow. And then the next part of the story is you're talking to the guy's sister, whatever, in this world. Mm-hmm. 
And she goes, oh, yeah, my brother told me that you left your earrings at his house. And I told him he probably just wanted you. He just wanted like him to talk to you again. Mm. And what the girl then hears is, oh, my God, you told your sister about me. <laughs> I think I know which friend this is. Do you? Based on context clues. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's, like, how we're thinking. And that's just, like, I know that's not how just guys, like, see anything. I love it. You got to believe in yourself. But uh, knowing that that's how girls think, like, how do you navigate that? So you think girls think like that more? Like, the del what is it called? Delulu? Delulu. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yes, being Delulu. That made me sound so millennial. I can't believe um, it. What is it called? <laughs> like, yeah, being delusional. <laughs> Welcome. Being delusional versus, like, doubt, self-doubt. Or, like, getting anxious about the, like the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, I guess the idea. I've never left a pair of earrings at a guy's house on purpose, but, like, I think the thought there is. So he'd is tell your, his sister about you? Definitely never done that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the most, oh my God. What me thing to do in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I, it wasn't me. The story wasn't I'm about me. Kidding. I would tell you kidding. it was I'm about me. Um, I've done my own version of that shit. Okay, leave your, the craziest thing you've done okay, to test a guy. Yeah, like, to the girls. What's the craziest thing you've done to test a guy? And then to the guys, what do you think the craziest thing a girl has done to you to test you? And do you have, like, have you ever thought about that? This, like, way of thinking about the early stages of dating as, like, a series of tests is very interesting. Is there anything there? Does that pop up anything in your mind? Yeah, everything's a test. I sometimes have to remind myself at, like, a certain point when you're, like, when you've been, when I've been seeing someone for long enough that, like, okay, don't need to test them anymore. Hmm. Like, they're not going anywhere, like... I don't, I can follow up on a text like life gets in the way or like I don't need to like send some cryptic shit. If like I'm trying to like figure out information, I could just like ask. If you're, if dating is a series of tests or if girls throw a lot of tests as tests at guys at the beginning, what are you testing? First of all, if they like you or not. Right. And like the, the like, you know, test is a way to measure something like it's like how much they like how you. much they like you, how willing they are to jump through the hoops. Yeah. Shit. Like, I guess guys call them shit tests. Oh, this is a, you guys do talk. Yeah, about guys this. know about this one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Th I yeah. didn't know that guys knew about this. Yeah. Okay. Not me. I know nothing about it. OK, no, yeah, no, no, you're just yeah. speaking on behalf yeah. of the men. Um, there is it isn't like the TikTok colloquialism. It, it is, it's, it's like in there. Somewhere. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so what do shit guys? Test. What you mean? It's also like when a girl is like mean to a guy. It's a shit test. Do or you like guys talk about this? Pokes amongst yourselves, or is this yeah. just something you think about on your own time? Um, like, would you ever like be at dinner with the boys and you're like, this girl's been shit testing me, like she did X Y Z? There's a certain demographic of guys that would probably like a little nerdier of a guy. So not Jay. <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, no, <laughs> not me. Um, just kidding. But you, you know what's so funny? Actually, this is very interesting. Are you are you texting right now? I got a text. Okay. I'm not gonna respond. Well, though. you know what? Forget about it. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. He, um, he can wait. <laughs> <laughs> he can wait. Um, when a guy, this is just so funny. This is a, such. This goes back to how much guys don't understand girls. How much girls don't. Understand. So when a guy talks about shit tests, he thinks it is a way. It's a way f that girls measure how much a guy believes, it, believes in himself and how confident he is in himself. No, <laughs> we don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, don't, we don't think about <laughs> that at all. So th that's so funny because they think the tests are a way to see if the guy is worth their time. Not because of how much they like <laughs> the girl, but because of how much the guy is like, secure in himself. No, we don't care about that. Yeah, so that's the funny thing. Wow. But from your perspective, shit tests are like a way to measure how much the guy likes you and if he's like worth investing in. Yeah. And is willing to invest in you. Yeah, and is willing to make time for you. I mean, it, then you can like break yeah, it down it's, to it what like Yeah, it means a lot more than... Yeah. Like quote unquote like love languages, but like right. yeah. if a guy is willing to like give you a couple hours of like his incredibly busy day, like that means a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, got an example of a shit test would be a girl at a bar, a guy's like hitting on her, and the girl would like kind of shit on him a little bit, like, oh, well, you're not that attractive, or say something like that, like brings him down. Yeah, well, that's how girls and, play. Or like your fashion is like terrible, <laughs> and um, the guy, if it's a test to see if the guy reacts, if the guy oh, reacts, 100%. like, well, fuck you, then or like gets offended, then she's like, oh, this guy's not even secure. He can't. He can barely take a poke. But if a guy is like totally ineffective then apparently he's more attractive. Interesting. And that's how we th that's how guys think about tests. Okay, like if a I measurement of their worth rather than a measurement of how much they value someone else. Okay. Or the girl. So I certainly do the like shitting on like a guy's clothes and like outfit and mm -hmm. like shit as a way of flirting and like if they get offended, I'm like, "Oh my god, they care about what I think." That's so funny. <laughs> And then, like, if it becomes, like, a riff and, like, a joke. Like, I, if I'm making fun of something about a guy, like, I kind of want him to make fun of me back. Mm -hmm. To, like, do, th like, if I'm, like, yeah, oh, course. my God, I hate your jacket. And yeah. he's, like, well, I hate yours. I'm, can't like, have, oh, great. I have an overly nice person. Yeah. Um, what's funny is, well, I think girls are actually quite good at figuring out what a guy's insecurities are. I mean, it's so obvious. Especially if you're, like, even dating them for, like, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, They're so odd. There's, like, this, like, fenced area around that thing. And so it's so easy to see, like, what they're protecting. Yeah. Uh, and, and I love to poke the bear exactly. on that Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Girls are so good at that. Uh, it's, so, it's so easy. It's so easy. It's, it's so, so easy. And it works. And it's just... But you know what? Like, there should be cheat codes. Like, that's of a cheat course. code. and like, a cheat code, yeah. Let's just keep doing that. Like, as a society, like, agree that, like, we're going to make men feel like shit about the things that they already feel like shit about. Yeah. And then that's how you grow a relationship. Also... You think if there was a guy that literally there was nothing he was insecure about? There's, there's truly no one who's not insecure about something. Yeah. But do you think that would be attractive? Do you think the, that guy would be like, wow, I found nothing. He's, like, just truly comfortable in his skin. He's no, not. I find because if someone doesn't have like something that they're insecure about or something that they don't love to talk about, like the way you build a relationship is through mm -hmm. being vulnerable. Love this. I love where this is going. And if there's nothing to be vulnerable about, it's harder to build a relationship. Like think about like when you get closer with someone, like you learn more about them and like they're willing to open up to you. Yeah. And then you kind of feel special yeah. that they're willing to say X, Y and Z. Yeah, I like that. I don't know if I fully agree. Like, if someone's insecurity or the way I, I, I could be vulnerable about like my past and like yeah. my how I feel about my fears. It doesn't have to be a, a an insecurity, insecurity but yeah. something that you don't feel a one hundred percent about. Right. Yeah. But I do think like overall, if someone's like fully comfortable in their skin, if they're like uncomfortable about something in, about their face or their job or their intelligence or their weight or their height or their background or their class they grew up in like whatever it is like whatever their insecurity is if they've just like fully owned it and are just unwaveringly confident about that even though they and, and like understand what it is I think that that is overall more attractive than the alternative no I'm not saying they don't have to be vulnerable but well I would still say that that's like an insecurity of theirs like it's something that they have built the strength to be able to talk about without it like without triggering the them yeah but it's still something they're insecure about yeah it's is still the not triggering their favorite part about themselves i guess the question is like is zero triggering is getting triggered zero percent like the highest form of what you can be like the highest form of like self like where you don't have growth. any like triggers. triggers yeah i don't know because some people use it as a control mechanism. Like, they find what someone gets triggered by, and they use that as a way to, like, not manipulate them. Oh, but yeah, sort they of do. Like, yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, Hi. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is manipulative. But Hello. Anyways. Like, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that's absolutely a thing that people no, do. No, it's great. Don't do that. Yeah. It's so mean. It's so funny. It's like people do that without even, like, consciously doing it sometimes, too. Just automatic. Yeah, those people are scary. Watch out, kings. Kings? And queens. Oh, you're calling the men kings? Yeah. That's like presumptuous. Well, okay. it's just a, it's just, you wouldn't get it. It's like a TikTok thing. You're, you're too old. <laughs> I just, <Sick>. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> what did you just say? I said, you're too old. 
Me? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to move on? Yes. Um, okay. Speaking of this topic, which is a great topic. That was great. Ruby, good job. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing those topics up. They were so juicy. You know, one thing I'm going to be is vulnerable. <laughs> we have all your triggers now, so. You know what? I own them. You can't, like, fuck with me. <laughs> okay, so every podcast we have to bring up something that's, like, th- like simplifying the world into two categories. Okay. We've, we've done the over talkers and over sh- versus over sharers. Yes. And I have a new one. For oh some yeah. reason, my brain just thinks in these now. For some reason, it's not good. I have no idea what Jay's about to say. Uh, overthinkers versus overdoers. I don't know what that means. Well, that's perfect because I'm about to explain Jay's it. Jay's going to monologue. Yeah, going to monologue. I just made this up. There may be nothing here, but let's just entertain Jay for a second. Thank you. Um, so an overthinker, that one's pretty obvious. You just like analyze everything you're always overthinking things and there's like and my view is i actually like overthinkers because i think that in order to end up being like interesting or like have interesting insights and takes on life you kind of have to overthink everything and then some percentage of them will be interesting some of your overthoughts will be interesting and then you kind of just like collect those and and then add them to your pile of little wisdom. Okay. And then, but the problem is they may not do anything and they might just overthink everything and like take zero action. And then there's people that are on the other end of the spectrum, these are not mutually exclusive, that are overdoers that just like take action and don't think about anything. It's kind of like fuck around and find out. Love it. And the best is if you're kind of both, I think, an overthinker and an overdoer. But there's action oriented people and like analysis oriented people, basically. What or do you like think you are? I mean, I'd got to be both. If you had to break it up percentage-wise, which way do you lean? I'd probably lean a little bit overthinker, which is why I have a podcast. What about me? You. You're definitely lean overthinker as well. <laughs> but we both are doers. No, we are doers. That's we the thing. I'm not down. saying this is the, they're not mutually exclusive. For some people, some people fall like squarely into one category. They're just paralyzed by overanalysis and overthinking and everything. And they can't get. And they, can't, they box themselves. They box in. themselves in. Some people like just don't think they're like, I'm just going to do, 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 grind, 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 build, 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 like whatever it is, like send the text, just like don't think, do, do, do. And they just like don't end up accumulating like there's wisdom no, no or knowledge. There's just, just no thought. Yeah, they're just like and you're not building machine, they're something. machines basically. Do you think that there's any, can you be successful on like just being a doer? Totally, like, you can. Like Totally. But you can't be successful just being a thinker. Just being a thinker, unless you're like a philosopher or something. Mm. Okay. Um, so if you're an overthinker, maybe everyone should just. I'm not going to be able to say that word. So can you say overthinker? It? No, no, no. Philosophy. Overdoer. Oh, philosopher. Philosophy. Philosopher. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. I. You could think about the overdoer as sort of like of like the CEO that's just like super tunnel vision on making their company successful. They're not really thinking about the implications of what they're doing or like can they be doing something different or just do 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 execute maximize profit like um that's an example of someone like a great like a zealot anyways interesting dichotomy great analysis great analysis do with it do with it what you will uh next topic is things in the west village things that that the west village needs slash free ideas um, from two consumers with great taste. Thanks. Hopefully. And we're just going to riff on this one. Okay. What Holes in the market. And if you just like treat the West Village as a little microcosm of society at large. I had a conversation today about how I don't go out in the West Village. What are you talking about? That's just not true. Like we go out to dinner, but like I don't go out to bars really or there's no like club or place to dance in the west village yeah that's true actually and we've Someone ta- asked me what my favorite bar was in the west village and i did not have a good answer exactly fell flat what did you yeah. like i feel like a lot of the bars have become very like murray hill-esque and like too busy too like s- 
sceney in a bad way. Like too many girls that like remind me of people I went to college with. So you're talking about Spaniard, Wolfie and Nell, Do West. Um, I guess maybe Hudson I'm Hound. not. I'm. I don't know if I'm thinking Duck. about Spaniard. I think I'm thinking about W O X Radio Bar. What is the name of that bar? Where? Um. White Horse Tavern, Dulux no. Tavern, Bandits. Give me cross streets. It's seventh and something. It's like an inappropriate name. It's like. Um. Sip and guzzle. <laughs> that's a new bar that's opening on Cornelia Street. Uh, I'll think of it in a second. Um, it's kind of like near the Spaniard ish, but on seventh. You know where we should start going? Where? The alley cat, like cellar dog place on Christopher. I have no idea what you're talking about. There's like a place in the village where you can go, like, shoot pool and, like, play ping pong and stuff. That's cool. I'm into that. I want to go, guys, nobody else so go there. I mean, I the first free wait. idea is to make an, a bar you can actually dance at in the West Village. It doesn't have to be a bar. It could be a lounge. Okay. Like, I want to, like we've said before, I want a Jackson Bond type venue. Well, you can't really dance there, but. I want, like, an Acme. Yeah. In the West Village. Yes. Or, like, a Laissez Faire in the West Village. Well, it has to do with, like, the type of buildings and everything and the structures. There is a way to make it happen. I yeah, someone like. like who has a basement. Well, I always talk to Emmett about how I want to turn the back of Emmett's into a like club? a party. And he wants to do like a day party there. Like a bagatelle vibe at Emmett's. That's Emmett. really cool. Yeah, should we do that? Someone needs to shake it up in the West Village. It's getting you, really sleepy. Okay, we're or boring. Do you want to host a Best Village party, in party the back of at the back of Emmett's? All right, Saturday? guys, you heard it here first. 37 minutes in. Well, I don't know if this time is going to match up, but pretty deep into the podcast, we just came up with an idea. Which is honestly how things should, should happen. Yeah, someone, if someone wants to take the idea and like approach Emmett and do it before us and just like invite us, slack. <gasps> no, we're doing it. <gasps> there it is. <laughs> you didn't even realize that I said it. Can we pick? Because I just tune it out. Can we just pan <laughs> to Kev right now? You see the look he gave? He was like so disappointed in you. <laughs> oh my God. Literally unreal. Um, okay. So the first idea for someone, free idea for someone is make a place to dance, or like just a cool spot, like an actually cool I'm spot. So sorry, no. A place where <laughs> finance bros just can't get in unless they're dressed really, really like. No, no finance bros. No, they, I'm first over. of all, I finance used to be a finance. Finance bros are out. I used to be a finance bro. Yeah, you're bro. not one anymore. Finance bros are out. There's a way to dress and carry yourself as a finance bro where you don't fall into the dangerous, like, archetype of finance, finance bros bro. are out. Okay, well, we'll, ta we'll talk about them. It can be at the... They're out for me, at least. At the doorman's discretion. They're out for me. Another idea is a upscale diner. Yeah. Like a very modernized, but also nostalgic diner that's just like very well executed. That's open Great 24 food, hours. Open 24 hours. Kind of has a Rocco's Soho diner. Ugh, I hate um, Soho diner. Well, whatever. No. Like a nicer, you know, just a vibe. Yeah, like an EJ's luncheonette. An elevated diner. Or like a JG Mellon vibes. Yeah, like really refreshing modern menu. But I want tasty. it on like Hudson. There's mm. a scene, everyone's like ends up there at the end of the night. Yeah. Like people come back from Soho to go into this diner in West Village. In the Who's West doing Village. that? Who needs, who can do this? You know, it's, it's a free idea. Take it, we'll it promote it. We'll help. We'll I have ideas. I we have, have people that can help. I have a Pinterest board. Wow. This. You can make the assets for it. I could make Ruby the makes assets. AI assets now using our, pl our platform. It's oh, great. wait. That happened this week. Ev oh, yeah. Everart is now available for public usage, right? Everart is now live. It's available for, available for public usage. So that means that anyone can buy a subscription anyone can and use, use it. The we have... Uh, it's. Do you want to explain what it is? It is a platform that helps you train AI on your brand's visuals. It's sick. I it's was on it all day today, like creating assets. So once you give it a few images of your product or a style or a photography style or an art style or anything, and you give it like five, 10, 15 images, so the more the better, but it can work with that. Uh, it'll understand your brand visually and then you can make infinite assets um, using AI that look super realistic. They're awesome. And you can just be way more creative with your content creation. The invite for our event will be made using EverArt. Yeah, we'll show you guys some examples here. You want to like throw some stuff up? Yeah. Jeff? It's cool it though. It's it's wild. Fashion companies are using it. Uh, big brands. 
Um, yeah. It's going to be sick. It's going to be sick. I mean, it is sick. It's great. So I we're throwing the party at the back of Emmett's. I don't think anyone's going to take the idea. I Why think we not? can do it ourselves. Okay. We can provide to the community. A party. We're just it. here to provide to the community. Okay, I was texting Emmett The best today. village community. He told me that he saw you. Did he? Yeah. He's such Cute. a nice guy. Like he's, he's so committed to our friend group. Uh, Emmett, can't wait to see you next. He wants to come on the podcast, and I want yeah. to record an episode with him at Emmett's. That's such a good idea. What do you guys think? He's down to clown. Chime in. Tap in. Pop in. Okay, so we've got elevated diner. We've got place to dance that's like sort of acme. I, li- I like a, di- I, you know, you know what I want? Disco in the West Village. A disco b- bar. I guess that's what acme is. But like, it can even be called disco. Bandits could be more disco. Disco with no I. Or just disco spelled normally. And it's just like a mini Studio 54 in the West Village. Is that too much? It's a little much. Okay, just like a normal disco club that's nostalgic. Also, and we'll never every, have a and Studio they have like 54 film cameras the way in there. Studio 54 like People was. are like taking pictures using film cameras, like flash. It's like See, disco. But it's the like reason cool. Studio 54 was Studio 54 was because there was no cameras. Yeah, that's and true. You could just okay, then no cameras allowed unless you're outside the venue. Do anything in there and like... N- like People could tell no, stories, but there's no It proof. was a judgment-free zone in there. 100%. That's what it was. My mom was a Studio 54 kid. Which is, um, I don't go out a ton, but when I do go out, I do like Paul's Casablanca. Mm-hmm. Because it's it just kind of gets the similar vibe. It's sort of absurd. And so when you get in, the shit there's no judgment. Oh, my God. It's like a judgment-free zone. It's kind of yeah. like do whatever, Everyone's let go. Everyone's just like yeah. out of their minds. Do you Studio 54. About are we done with free ideas? No, but that's like two or three good ones. We'll we'll this is gonna be a repeatable segment we do every ep- episode. So if you want free good ideas, just uh, check back. And oh, fresh, quick, fresh food, sushi bar. What's it called? Sushi counter. Sushi counter. Great example of that. We need more things like sushi counter. West Village is all sit down. It's all like classic food, dine like fine dining. And there needs to be more quick food places. That's the last one. Okay, moving on. Do you want to talk about your TikTok? Oh, yeah. Um, So Kevin's going to play the video right here. I came across this video on TikTok. I've come across a bunch of them. It's just mind-blowing, first of all, just like where Unreal Engine... Unreal Engine is like a video game engine that is just like, for some reason, reached a level of like realism that is mind-blowing. This is not real. That's not a real apple. It's not a real apple. It's, this is going crazy viral on TikTok. See, this is what Jay's TikTok looks like. I've never seen this before. <laughs> it's not real. It looks so, it, like, my mind almost just doesn't believe it. How is that not real? Look how the close-up shots are what get me. You so like my idea candy? is that people should be putting, like, this is trending right now. So, pe- should, so if you have a product... You should put your product in this using Unreal Engine. Well, there's another free idea. Yeah, Unreal Engine. This makes me want to go home and like start playing with Unreal Engine because I can make videos like that. If you want me to make you a video using Unreal Engine, let me know. Can actually, I'm gonna send you assets. I have perfect. an idea. This is Lincoln Build, guys. This is how. This is what we do all day. How things get built every day. Okay. What's next on the list? We were gonna do. Uh. Eye-opening facts. <laughs> I dropped the ball. <laughs> but Ruby dropped the ball. I have one fact. It, the, and she sh- it is shattered. I have a fact that like what? seven different people sent me. Okay, tell me. You're ten times more likely to be bitten by a New Yorker than you are a shark. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that like, like that's so accurate. That pretty much just encompasses New York in a single fact. Yeah, but, like, the fact that multiple people <laughs> sent that to me. Like, where, like, where are we getting that information? Like, I who did that? Can we bring someone on the podcast that's been bit by someone? Um, like, just in, like, a non-sexual context? <laughs> <laughs> like, bitten on the street? <laughs> or bitten in, like, an altercation? Wh- by a human or by another animal? Well, by, what do you mean, another animal? <laughs> bitten by a human. That's what the stat is about, the fact. You're more likely to get bitten by another New Yorker than by a shark. Yeah. Right? Is that what it is? Yeah. That's a crazy stat. And look, people are so scared of sharks, but they're not scared of New Yorkers. They are scared of New Yorkers. Yeah. 
I will bite you. Uh, yeah, so watch out. We had way more fun facts. This might be another segment on the podcast just because we get so many facts sent to us. We're just getting bombarded with all these facts. I mean... That we have to share them. And then the last topic of the day is audience feedback. So I have some questions that I want to ask. This episode is really about the community, isn't it? Well, I think that we're just like, it's the top of the year. We are trying to make this podcast and this project of ours the best it could be. And at the end of the day, it's for the listeners. Oh, I said I was going to stop lying. That was such a lie. What? I didn't even believe it we're, as I said it. We're clipping this. This is going on. TikTok. The point of the podcast is so that I can hear myself speak. The point of the podcast is so Ruby can get as much attention as possible. And the second tier goal is to connect. That's a lie again. I really, I was going to say to connect with the community. <laughs> That's Jay's goal. I My goal is to where we can just say for people to go somewhere and they all go. That's my Secret mission, okay. and also to like just Mine's talk about things and opposite. see if I'm completely wrong. You just you want feedback. I you want, want feedback. Yeah, feedback from the community. I just want attention. Yeah, good or bad. Actually, no. My mom always said to me, "If you're gonna be famous, make sure you're not infamous." It freaks me out the 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 clips that you po- post. P- Why? P- 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 Are uh-huh. you nervous over there? Yeah. Uh, po- it freaks me out. Even posting these freaks me out. But Why? I'm. It's also this is also about getting over my fears mm-hmm. and having haters. Yes. Potentially. Who hates Jay? If you do hate not. Jay, don't tell me. Don't do it. He needs some haters. I'm getting don't over my it. fears. I'm getting over my imposter syndrome. Good for you, Ruby. Yeah. Doubt that. Doubt that. Just kidding. I am also. No, you really are. I'm getting over, but you know what I'm not doing? Okay, you know what? You want you want a real challenge? Yeah. How to get over your imposter sy- syndrome? I can't talk. Um, do you want to do some, like, red leather, yellow leather? Yeah. Uh, the big black bug, blood blue, black blood, blood, the other black bug, yes blood blue. Say yes to people wanting to give you money. I did that. You did that? Yeah. Today? Well, we didn't, like, th- we didn't get to the money conversation, but I, I said yes. So, first of all, I do think this is something that's super unique about you, and I do, I do think it's... a a superpower, but often your superpower is your kryptonite. So, uh, do you want to th- explain it? Your s- superpower or your kryptonite, or both? What it is, or we're just alluding. Ruby to it. gets imposter syndrome about taking money for helping people with projects and things like that. You probably don't ask for what you deserve, which we're helping her with, as a community, and me. I'm really good at what I do. But I think you care so much about executing and delivering v- like real concrete results to people and brands that you have a you have a high bar for yourself. Sometimes and it's you forced you to like obsess about that bar and you've you have you have you have achieved so much. You've you gotten can charge for ideas. Did you know that? Oh yeah. Guys, you can charge people just for ideas. Have you ever worked with a consulting agency or a, a marketing agency or like an agency any agency? Yeah. Like, like a consulting company. It's like yeah. God, they charge so much, and most of the value is not very concrete or measurable. So you can definitely charge. I'm going to check in with you next episode, and I want you to have made at least a stack. A stack? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually don't know what that means. Um, do you, do you want to hire me for a project? <laughs> yeah, of course. Thanks. I've already told you that. I know. Uh, okay, so the things <laughs> I need your guys' input on is a few things actually the first question is who is an influencer or tiktoker that you think is going to be to grow a lot like who's the next alex earl yeah pop off in 2024 or deserves to be way bigger like send us your like if you were like an a and r or like talent scout or something like that who would you bet on or invest in? you want to say what a and r means people might not know I actually forget what it Artist stands for. Repertoire. Oh, yeah, that's what it stands for. Uh, basically, talent scout. Like spotting talent before they reach their true potential. 
So throw some names in if you have any. And you'll be on record saying that you believed in someone before they got really big. So or bigger. Follow you back. Yeah. So that's one thing. The second thing is I'm looking for amazing acoustic singer songwriters or just singer songwriters in the in general in New York or that are here often. If you know of any, it would be hugely helpful to me. That's the second question. Oh, I'll pause for a second. The third one is one that Ruby came up with. I don't know why you had this question. I'm curious. But what celebrities do you actually care about? Like, not just like you follow them because they're relevant or you follow them because everyone else likes them, but you actually care about them. And if they told you to do something or buy something, you would actually you listen. You would actually go do it. Which is like the definition of being an influencer. You're influencing yeah. people, right? Um, I don't really have a good answer for that. Neither do I. Mine would be like pretty nerdy, probably. Like Brian Johnson. I don't know who that is. He's the guy that, he's like that biohacker guy. I think he's kind of a little, like, we, I mean, he's clearly weird, but he's the guy that, like, wants to live forever. Oh, of course but that's I'm, your celebrity, like, I'm into biotech. Crush. I'm into biohacking. I'm a, like, this is, like, my thing. And I ha- he actually has really good principles. If you read his, like, little manifesto thing, it's Chris not about Jenner. being weird. Chris Jenner. Chris Jenner. Why? She's just like, look what she built. So you would follow her blindly? No. No? But I question everything. Hmm. I'm trying to think, it, like, who else? There's no one who, if there's not, I don't think that there's a single person that I don't know on a personal level that I would just, like, do something because they told me to. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But the the thing that's kind of crazy is, like, I think there's more room for more celebrities that people actually truly care about. Unless you guys have great answers for this, like, someone pops in your head immediately, which isn't for me, isn't the case for me. Like, there maybe there needs to be, like, a new generation of celebrities that people that are actually spreading a message that pe- people actually care about. I say something so what? crazy. Say. Do you think people see us as celebrities, Jay? No. <laughs> God. <laughs> you know how people are like, oh, anyone can start a podcast these days? That's us. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how every podcaster thinks they're the exception to that? Um, we're celebrities. Ryan Reynolds and Dax Shepard are two other ones. Who is that? Uh, she's this girl. You've met her before, I think. She watches the podcast a lot. So do you care about do you care about lyrics in a song? Well, there's two types of people: people that care about l- the words or the beat. I don't care about it. The song. You don't care about app. You just don't like music. I don't like music. That's crazy. I listen to it. You know what's so funny? It wasn't until I moved to New York that I th- realized that there could be people that don't like dogs. I don't like dogs. Like truly don't like dogs. I don't like dogs. I don't like. And they're people. like. I don't us. like music. I don't like. Food. You, like, you like pizza and ice cream. I don't like pizza. That you're breaking my brain right now. And I do like you're ice cream. You're breaking my little brain. I like vanilla ice cream with rainbow sprinkles. So ice cream is it. You know, I have a whole notes. Oh my god, this would be so crazy to share. I have a whole notes thing that is my best guess for things that everybody likes. It's actually really it? hard. So I think about consensus a lot. Like what is it easy to get consensus on where it's like, yeah, everyone likes this. So it's just universal. And things where it's like no one agrees. Interesting. And it is a very interesting way to think about things because there are things that people are just just cannot reach agreement on. One of them that people cannot reach agreement on outside of like the edge cases is like who's attractive. Well, that's so case by like everyone has their own like beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Yes. Subjective. Not the one. Another one is like what's funny. So, like, I'll have close friends that are, like, literally the same person as me. They'll send me a meme, and they'll be like, I'm dying. And I'll be like, you think this is funny? Comedy is so personal. Yeah. I think we've actually talked about this on the podcast before. Uh, but anyways, I have this whole list of things that are just universally liked. Here are the things that I don't like. Okay. I don't like dogs. So that is I don't on like the cats. list of things that people universally... Actually, it's not on here, but... I... What about cute dogs, like puppies? Puppies I can put up with. Okay, so I, I have puppies, not dogs. Um, I don't like Italian food. You are just like the ultimate contrarian. I don't thing. like public pools. I don't really like swimming pools at all. I 
don't what like. What about the beach? I love the beach. Okay, the beach is on here. Love the beach. Everybody loves the beach. Not everybody loves the beach. Espresso martinis. I like an espresso martini. Cute babies. Babies. Sex? But not all babies are cute. Sex. Yeah. Elon Musk. Indifferent. Uh, this is uh, he's on under like the strong feelings section. Oh, like people have uh, an opinion on. An easy way to make money or improve a situation. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Uh, seeing yourself in a better light. I say more. Laughing. I love to laugh. Adventuring. I don't really like adventuring. Hmm. I like. I, I don't like going places I've never been. Feeling brave or courageous. I love feeling that way. Winning. That's obvious. Satisfying sounds like ASMR. Okay, mm -mm. I'm putting an asterisk by that. Step Brothers, the movie. Never seen it. Really? I don't like movies. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks for food when you're really me. hungry. <laughs> That's I don't. I don't know when I'm hungry. <laughs> clearly. Oh my god, you're such a weirdo. Feeling special. Oh, I would love to feel special. Bougie places. How bougie? Bougie where like exclusive the, bougie. The people around me think they're better than me, or the people around me know that we're the same level of because good you're because there. we're there. Exclusive and bougie. That's what it says right here. Exclusive and bougie. But I'm asking. Yeah. This the second part. Mm -hmm. The second yes. I like to be among people who think that they uh, attractive what people in general. Um, Zach, Brian, Morgan Wallen, and Taylor Swift. They're all like you have to like or someone. I that's don't not care. true. But they get really strong reactions. I don't know the difference between Zach Bryan and Morgan Wallen and Taylor Swift. I just started to like this year. I was a true Taylor Swift hater, like, forever until I saw the Eras tour. But also, like, just because, like, she helped me get through a breakup. Uh, to be featured uh, in a video or, like, something that gets, like, posted or like some compilation or something like that, or, oh, like a, or a dump, like someone's like. I love that. that. So like being featured on things, people really like. It's yeah, pretty universal. That people, because so then pe it goes back to people feeling special and chosen. Exactly. And like that they've so I had this list. I'm gonna open. Wait, so I'm gonna put it that, out there. You know what I like even more than yeah. being featured? Not even more, but about the same. Mm -hmm. Seeing who wasn't featured. You like that more? Like, I'm gonna out myself, but like when you post a photo dump. Mm -hmm. I love to see who you didn't include. I I do like seeing that in, in other people's stuff. Yeah, yeah. see? Uh, if you have any suggestions for things that are, like, universal, that people pretty much all like, or at least gets, like, very strong reactions from, like, a significant group of people, hit me up, and I'll add it to the list, and I'm going to post it in a public Google Doc so you can not lose track of things that tend to, to be liked. We will just post the screenshot of this list on the Instagram. Yeah, and you know what you know what it is? It's like a it's like bearings, because people like get like lost in like too niche of things, especially people that are like kind of weird, like me. And uh, like if you want to start a business, you should probably start like an ice cream or pizza place or like things that where your market is really big. It's not that easy and to then, run a pizza place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um. Anyways. Thanks so much. I think we hit our hour mark. Don't say that. Thanks so much. Hey, guys. Not me, guys. Oh, my God. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to Best Village Podcast. We appreciate you giving us the time out of your day to listen to us jibber-jabber. If you want to follow us, Instagram and TikTok are both Best Village Podcast. All things going on there. I'm going to start posting more, like funny things on stories i think i'm the social media manager yeah i read the dms i don't follow people and the head of business development yeah that's a great title should i add that to my linkedin yeah poll sound up in the comments should i become a linkedin influencer a linkedin pop girly pop yeah um that's it thanks guys see you next week see ya bye bye